Hello everybody. Today we're going to try to have a relatively quick discussion about how to calculate how many cells we want in series to create our battery pack. And this example right here that I'm holding is eight cells in series. But how do we determine that for the packs that we make? So stick around. This is an LTO battery that I discussed in my last video, and there are eight cells all in series. Now series cells means that we're setting them up uh, positive to negative, positive to negative. Anybody remember these? This is an old mag light. Uh, they're not as popular as they used to be. This one still has a little bit of charge. So right here we have four cells in series. Now alkaline batteries are typically one and a half volts each. So if we look at just one cell, we have 1.462, and then if we look at the whole string of cells together, 5.84. So what's happening is we're adding our packs together. The first one, one and a half, then three, then four and a half, and then finally six volts. So we add our voltages together when we put our cells in series like this. When we build our large DIY power walls, off-grid systems, uh, we're looking for 48 volts. So 48 volts means we're gonna need to string together something like 32 if we were using alkaline cells. Or, you know, if you're using lead acid, you're gonna be stringing together 24 cells. But every battery is going to have a range. These LTO cells, for example, uh, they have a range between one and a half volts and 2.7 volts for each cell. So how many in series do we need to create 48 volts? Same with lithium iron phosphate or uh, the Chevy Volt battery, which is lithium nickel manganese cobalt or something. So how do we determine the right range for us? Now in this video, I'll be making some general statements about batteries, about their nominal voltages and their charging voltages. And yes, there's exceptions to every rule, and one brand is gonna have its own specific requirement for a specific battery. It's up to you to determine those to look up the manufacturer's data sheets. But I'll be talking in general terms here. Before I can talk about the really fun batteries, the lithium batteries, I have to talk about lead acid batteries, which we've had for over 100 years. It's the grandfather of batteries. Uh, and everything that we have has actually been built around the idea of using a lead acid battery in your system. The lead acid battery is actually made up of individual cells. This particular one in front of me is a 12 volt, but a lead acid cell is two volts, which means inside this case are six individual cells strung together in series to give us the 12 volt output. Now, that's exactly what they did with this, you know, high-tech LTO battery. But in this case, they strung together eight cells. Each cell has a nominal 2.3 volts. So it's really fun to see the difference. Now, with the eight cells strung together, we get 18 volts. With the six cells, but different chemistry, we get 12 volts, because this has a nominal voltage of two volts per cell. The LTO has a nominal voltage of 2.3. The alkaline has a nominal voltage of 1.5. We have things like this. This is a, a battery I built in a previous video out of some Chevy Volt cells. These have nominal voltages of 3.7 volts per cell. And so it's, it's fun to see what your chemistry is and what you want the end voltage to be to determine how many cells in series. But what makes it even more fun is that we have a range we can work with. The inverters have ranges. My particular inverters that are up on the wall behind the camera, they have a range of 41 volts to 63 volts. Now that will vary depending on the type of inverter that you have, but a lot of inverters have this wide range. And that's because depending on the state of charge of the battery, the SOC, whether the battery is full or empty, the voltage will vary. So the inverters have to have a range that they can work inside of. Now to determine what the best range is, we'll, we can actually look at the old fashioned flooded lead acid because 
The old fashioned lead acid technology has been with us for over a hundred years. So all the other technology, the inverters and the charge controllers, they have been built based upon the platform that the lead acid battery gave us. And what I mean by the platform is just the voltage range. So when we look at a flooded lead acid battery that has a nominal voltage of two volts per cell, we're really talking about a battery that might range between uh, 1.9 volts and 2.2 volts per cell. It could even go higher depending on if you're in bulk mode on your charge controller or if you're in equalization, which is another stage. If you're looking at the lead acid that has a nominal voltage of two volts per cell and you want a nominal battery pack that's 48 volts, we need 24 cells in series. Now, what is the range that we're typically going to be operating in? Well, most lead acid batteries don't want to go below 50% state of charge. So you're working in the upper 50%, not the lower half, the upper half. So we're typically talking about battery packs that are going to be roughly in the 48 to 54 volt range. So that is actually the ideal range that inverters and charge controllers were built upon. Inverters were designed to work most efficiently at the range of 48 volts to 54 volts. Charge controllers sometimes don't even have a setting that will go below 54 volts. I've looked at some of them. When I built my first power wall, it was out of cells like this. It was Chevy Volt cells. And I had them grouped 12S, meaning 12 cells in series, meaning that I could get 48 volts out of it but its nominal voltage was actually 44 volts. It worked lower than what is ideal. So I typically wanted to charge that at 48.6 volts. A lot of charge controllers will not charge at 48.6 volts. A lot of inverters won't charge at 48.6 volts. I had an Ames inverter 6K for a long time and I powered my house with that. It was a beautiful inverter but its pre-configured settings for charging would not go low enough to allow me to charge that Chevy Volt battery. It really wanted to see things like a sealed lead acid battery or a flooded lead acid battery. So I wound up never being able to use the charging function of the Ames inverter. And before I could buy a charge controller, I had to verify that it could charge at that lower voltage which is one of the reasons I purchased a Victron charge controller. It's one of the few charge controllers that allows you to charge really low voltage packs. Now there's other packs out there that are also low voltage. Uh, a common one I see is gonna be the Tesla battery packs. Uh, I think it's the Model S. Each one of those is a 6S configuration and people are putting two of them together, creating nominal 44 volt packs which will work with a lot of 48 volt equipment, but it's on the low end. Now when I first built my battery pack, I built the battery first, then I went looking for a uh, good inverter. Now I used a little reliable electric inverter just to get me by, but while I was looking for a good inverter, a really big, powerful inverter, I called around to three of the major companies, Schneider, Outback, and Magnum. And I asked all three tech support. I said, hey, I have a battery that needs charging at 48.6 volts, and I'm typically working between 42 and 48 volts as my range. Is that okay with your inverter? And every one of those tech support guys had the exact same response. And it kind of went like this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to give you an imitation here. It went, Technically, yeah, you could do it, but we don't recommend it because your inverter is gonna work harder, it's gonna be less efficient, and it's gonna wear out faster. Man, I, so I never did wind up buying one of those while I had the 12S configuration of the lithium NMC chemistry, being the Chevy Volt Pack. And had I to do it over again today, I would take the extra effort and I would break the pack apart, kind of like this one is broken apart, and I would create 14S. I think 14S for a lithium NMC chemistry is the ideal voltage range. And 
like I said, the ideal voltage range is one that kind of works with all the other components, the inverters, the charge controllers, and they're all based around the lead acid platform. So let me show you this spreadsheet that I created. Now the top row of this spreadsheet shows the flooded lead acid. We can see the nominal voltage is two volts per cell, 24 cells in series. We're typically gonna be operating in the range of 48 volts to 54 volts. Now the 54 volts would be your uh, float voltage and you probably want your absorption voltage even a little bit higher than that. So that is the ideal range that we want to be in for all of our equipment kind of all the time is between 48 and 54 volts. I hope I've established why we like that range well enough for the purposes of this video. All right, so let's look at some other chemistries. Uh, we have lithium iron phosphate. Now that's the, the battery tower that I have right behind the camera. Those are lithium iron phosphate batteries. They have a nominal voltage of 3.2 volts. They're gonna operate between 2.5 and 3.65 is kind of your extremes, but typically you're gonna to wanna to keep those between three volts per cell and three and a half volts per cell. I personally think the ideal series connection for a lithium iron phosphate is gonna be 16 cells in series. That way we, we get to use the bulk of the battery's energy. We stay away from the very bottom end or the very top end, so we extend our cycle life Next down on my Excel spreadsheet, I have lithium, and I labeled it as NMC because I've got the Chevy Volt battery, and this is the one that I have experience with. So I was always operating in a range between about 42 volts and about 49 volts. Uh, 48.6 is what I typically set my Victron charge controller to. So I was always operating at a voltage range that was a little bit low for the inverter. And you know, the inverter would start beeping at 44 volts, but I still had power between 42 volts and 44 volts that I wanted to use, but the inverter's beeping away because the inverter thinks I have a low voltage battery pack. Uh, that was with the Ames inverter. You can arrange your normal lithium cells in 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16 S16 16 cells in series configurations. 16 is really high. I have a friend, Ben, up in Vermont, He's running 16S, but all of these will basically work with a lot of equipment. But I personally think that the 14S or 14 cells in series is the ideal voltage range. It most closely matches a 24S lead acid battery, and it's gonna work the optimal range for the inverters and the charge controllers. And all that equipment will now run more efficiently so we can get better use of our solar energy that we we get. Then comes this guy. This is a little different. Uh, this is LTO or lithium titanate. Now these are brand new for me. I just learned about them, but they have a voltage range of one and a half up to 2.7 volts per cell. Their nominal voltage is 2.3. I found when I was doing my discharge test that there's almost no capacity left after two volts. So there's no need to run it below two volts per cell. 2.7 volts is what you want to set your absorption charge to, sometimes called bulk charge to. But then your float would be down at 2.6 volts per cell, and that's what it's going to settle out to. You could go anywhere between 20 cells in series up to 24 cells in series and still use them with your typical inverters and charge controllers. Now, I personally think a 22 or a 23S would probably get you right in the sweet spot where you can use the bulk of the battery's ability without going into the extremes. And with that, I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I tried to slam this topic and uh, make it as easy to understand as I could. When I made my first Powerwall out of a Chevy Volt battery, I just did it in 12S because, hey, Chevy <laughs> put them together in 12S. But after I had built the battery and had it up on my wall, I had the struggle of trying to find inverters and charge controllers that could work with it. And that's what got me on the kick of trying to learn about cells in series and what the ideal range is. Uh, so I hope you guys can kind of learn from my mistake on that. Knowing what I know now, if I was to build another one out of Chevy Volts, I would take the extra effort up front to reconfigure the cells to 14S. So I really hope you guys enjoy the video. Thanks a lot for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, share. Check out some of the links in the description below if you'd like to help support the channel. Thank you very much.